hello today we will make a simple survey form let's say and in here we can learn about use reducer in react so we have a basic template here i just created it using vit as i did before in my slideshow the first thing that we need to do is to make a folder if we have multiple reducers or let's say different kinds of um, data that we need to manipulate but in this case we only have one so that would be a one producer .ps. and then of course we need to make our style style sheet i'm going to use simple css here oh, what's this ah it's my git okay the first thing that we need to do in here is to, um, let's say, what do you call this? Initialize an initial state. So we can say initial state equals to... This will be an object of variables, or in this case, keys, that we will manipulate inside of our components. So since we're using TypeScript, we will have an interface of initial state and I am a noob in, I am a noob in TypeScript but what I can tell you is that you should always have a you should always use a Pascal case in naming uh, interfaces in TypeScript I may just go with a type of initial state if you also have a big project you also should um, let's say place this in a different folder like types.d.ts stuff like that and okay, so our initial state let's think about the things that we need in a survey form so we need to get uh, let's do it in the type first for interface so we need to get the name of a user which would be a string what else the name the address of the user, which would be a string as well. Uh, phone number, I guess. Phone number, which would be a string as well. Hmm, besides that, email, yeah, email. Does that come before? Uh, let's just put it up here. Email, phone number. And their and their age. Uh, that should be beside the name. Age is a number. <clears throat> and then we need to get their occupation, which would also be a string. Mm, and I think that's it for their demographics. Uh, demographics, but <laughs> uh, demographics. There we go. So now we can think about the content of the survey. What are we asking about? And since this is just a dummy survey form, you can just think of like, uh, let's say, favorite movies. Favorite movies, which would be an array of strings. And then we have... <coughs> hmm. Let's see. Array of movies. Let's say a feedback. Feedback. Which would also be a string. I don't know what for. Since we have a feedback, we can just say favorite. Uh, let's say. Likes. There we go. Which, which is a string and dislikes. Let's just say that we are, we are asking them about an event that we. Let's say. That took place and are and was handled by our organization or something. <laughs> but yeah, so this is our initial state, and now we can just fulfill this inside our well initial state. And we have a name of an empty string, an age of let's say zero as the starting point, an address of or maybe eighteen, I guess, or an address of string on that string an empty string email an empty string and so on and so forth
likes empty array dislikes empty array and feedback would be an empty string there we go <coughs> and mind you that reducers are pretty much the foundation of free opt redox which you might have heard before and i think that is too much for a simple thing like a survey form because Re react redox is for handling complex um, states and in a survey form you only need to handle different or a variety of states but they have one purpose that is to fill up a data about a certain user or certain person so what we have here is const form reducer this is a function that takes a state which would be any because it can be anything and an action which can also be any which is also anything I mean so this is a function so these are the variables <coughs> or parameters that are passed upon the use reducer hook and what we can do in here is to have a switch statement because it is much clearer than using an if else statement because we are going to write through the type of action or we can name this uh, differently we can say action that name what what is the name of the action that the user is trying to perform but in here we can just say action that type we are going to specify this in the uh, let's say the dispatch function or the state setter that we will use once we use the use reducer hook but for now let us follow along in here and in the case of um, yeah set name we will return the all of the state uh, okay all of the state and then set the name to the payload of the action So that is the same as the type. We will provide a type or any you can name this anything really. A type, a name, and then the payload or the value that we will pass on to the action. I think for the payload you need to name it as payload. I haven't really done much um I haven't really gone deeper or deep in this particular hook, but I know how it works and I want to share it with you guys. So we will get the payload of that which will now be the value of the name when we set the name. And we can do the rest for everything everything else. Set age. <coughs> we will return the current state. The age will be the action the payload. Case of set address, we will return current state and the age of the address. We now be the action that failed. Also, uh, you can notice that I'm using a spread operator. Um, what I'm basically doing is uh, taking all of the value of the state and those are the name age address etc and assigning them into a new object which uh, which is what we are returning to this reducer or to the reducer which will now be the value of its state right here and then we will take the key or the variable that has the same name of the thing that we are trying to manipulate okay and Stop typing, I should continue typing. And that means that that um, that key will have a value equal to the payload of the action. Phone number. Oh wait, oops. Set. State um, phone number 
is equal to action dot fill. Um, I think we can assign this state to an initial state to the initial state. Can we? Ah, we can. Okay, that was my bad. So this can be anything, but if you have a type, let's say, and you want to be strict here, I guess you can have this. For the action, I'm not really sure what it should be, but here we go. Okay. Case of set operation. So as you can notice that this kind of um, let's say bur boilerplate is almost the same as the app redux because they are the same, just a bit more complicated, I guess. State. default would be nada so would be nothing so we will not set that now we just need to export the uh, what do you call this the initial state and the form producer all right now the main uh, let's say state setter and the state is done which is pretty much the backbone of our survey form we can now move on to our component so, the line of code that we need here to access that reducer is to go and uh, initialize the variables, the, an array of two variables, which is the state and a variable called dispatch, which will be returned by the use reducer hook. And this use reducer accepts two parameters, always. That is the... Wait, let me check again. <laughs> Two to three. Let's see. Uh, yeah, there we go. The reducer of form reducer and the initial state of that reducer. Let me see the problem. Ah, see, there we go. Any, it says any. So, I guess we can put this back to any. any. Oh, there we go. There we go. Now we have no errors. What we can do here is th that we can just assign this state, the type of initial state in the component itself that is using, well, the state. So we can export that as well. Initial state. There we go. Oh, ah, right. Ah. Uh, there we go. Yeah, see, I'm a noob in TypeScript. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, that is pretty much the backbone of it. So now if we go to the uh, console, okay, it's empty. If we console.log the state, So you can see the state is the initial state that we had, which is an age of 18, dislikes, likes, and etc. So now if we say that we want to dispatch, dispatch the type of uh, set name, and the name or the payload will be equal to, let's say, my name, Aaron. There we go. Too many re-renders because we are not putting this inside a use effect. But for now, let us see what it looks like. 
There we go. We have a run. Okay. And if you don't know what I meant by that, there are too many renders because we didn't put this inside a use effect. You can check my previous video, which pretty much tackles uh, how components render or why they render, and how you can manipulate the side effects or the effects that you want to happen when a component renders and or re-renders. Anyway, let us remove this now. <coughs> and refresh because I don't want to see errors. There we go. So how can we make this form? <laughs> well, this is pretty much just HTML, so... Yeah, start. <coughs> so we have a div, which will be the... Should we just go straight for the form? Because Okay, let's do that. Let's go straight for the form. Then, since this is a small project, I don't, I will not separate the functions that I will use. But it is good practice to separate the functions or the logic, business logic, let's say, or the back end. <laughs> not really back end, but really the logic, the logic handler that you have to a utils folder so we have a function of const under submit <coughs> would be and then we will pass on the e we have any for now because i don't really know the type of it so on submit we have a handle submit and then e that prevent default this is just to prevent the page from refreshing when we submit the form. <coughs> well, let's see what type it is actually. Let me see. Will this work if I copy paste this? <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't. Okay, let's just put that to any, so we don't have, we don't waste any time. What's important is we learn about uh, use reducer. So let's say we have a form. Ah, uh, you know what? Let me set the design to a simple uh, one because it's hurting my eyes really. Um, zero. It's just simple HTML like a boiler like a boilerplate. It's the index style will import it on the main or the entire body let's say of all the components in this application and index CSS. there we go as you can see right there and it's looking much better already and let's set the color to just a plain one color white and you know what let's do some very cool um, CSS. Although the main topic of this uh, of this video is use reducers, but you know, should make this into two four. Just copy this, cut and paste. There we go. <coughs> or, or black. 
okay um what else do we need to set in here i think we don't need to set anything in the body yeah that's it okay how can i build this now um so we have the name Wait, let me consult the log this thing actually because So we need a fifth. We need one, two, three, four. No, one, two, three, four, five. Five input fields, and then one number. And five text fields and one number. Field. <coughs> um, in React, okay, I I was told out. <laughs> in React, you can use a. You can have a constants folder, constants. Then in here you can export all the types of all the type of elements that you need, and in there you can have its ID, an object, an array of objects, which contains the properties of the element that you will have. Let's say an array of inputs, and the properties inside are its IDs, a key as well, because you need to have a key for React. Which I will dive, I will dive deep in another video. <coughs> he is name, title, of course, and autocomplete, placeholder, and stuff like that. But for an in this project, I will just use a simple HTML uh, stuff. So an input, <coughs> input with a class of form inputs times. Have labels. Oh, yeah, right. I forgot the labels. Oops. Uh, let's have a label times five with a child of input. Okay, why is this an error? Oh, oops. <laughs> child of input with the class name of one. Inputs. There we go. Yeah, okay. So, pretty much just do it. Like, see what I mean? Why you need to have the constants? Because this is time consuming. And when you're building large applications, your main focus really is to just uh, to just do the logic. And you don't have the time for, let's say, the design. Well, you can do it in CSS, and you should focus on design. <coughs> but when it comes to uh, HTML elements, really, repetitive stuff can be can be used, uh, can be, what do you call this, executed <laughs> using a, a shortcut. There we go. That's why I use React as well. I'm not sure put spaces in between so I can see better. Oh, not like that. There we go. So like, we will put IDs as well. So just do this, because I will do something special well not really special but something I do to make my code re much more readable when a specific element has multiple uh, attributes which is pretty much just aligning them vertically so there we go and we'll have a title equal to the um, the name of the label but for now let's leave it empty and an ID We'll have here HTML4. Uh, the first one should be about name, name, input, title as well. Enter your name. Okay, should have used um, double cursor there, but okay. We have a span of enter your name. What else? After name, it should be address, right? Uh, email, right? Email input. Then enter your email. Okay, I should have a span here. Span. Email. Then here, the next one should be after email, we have. Oh, the occupation is a select tag, so. Email we have phone number, right? No, the address, okay. Address. 
think I should have just went for the constants. Oh, <laughs> I just input enter your address. Ah, right. I forgot the placeholders. Um, wait. Placeholder. Save it. Empty for now. Yes. Enter. Enter your name. Enter your email. Enter your address. And we have next to address is phone number. So phone. Yeah, this is definitely a hassle, what the fuck. Oh, oops, I should blur that out. <laughs> okay. Enter your phone number. Then the last one should be the Wait, really? Did I think that occupation was part of this? No, occupation is a select tag, so... Let's have a select... Alright. I took a short break while I, while I post the video, but let's continue. So the occupation, select tag... And in here as well, we can use it in the constants, which will have the options for the occupation. But for now, we can manually input it ourselves. Option times five. Let's say occupation is student. Alright, we should have one option that is pretty much disabled. Disabled, low value equals empty just while you I guess oh, okay value equals read only and then choose your equation there we go I actually made the select uh, much more styled and actually like that. Just a few months ago, the select tag looks, looked pretty bad. <laughs> anyway, let's continue. We have a teacher. Uh, let's just say professor. Much more professional, I guess. Formal, there we go. We have a office worker. Businessman. I don't know how it's spelled or how it's separated. <laughs> Just say businessman, I guess. We have. Yeah. Ah, I think an entrepreneur is better. More uh, eloquent entrepreneur. There we go. And in here we can have a, let's say, a doctor <laughs> and we have that. okay all right um after occupation we have what else ah all right so we have the age as well actually so after occupation, no, I think after the name, yeah, beside the name, we need to have the age, so, name, label, html4, h, input, span, what's your age, how old are you there?
I think we have, we need to put the place so we Min of 18 and 18. So there we go. Um, what else? Uh, let's set up the legs and dislikes. We have a label. You can use different approaches here, like a legend or something. But I'm not really that, uh, let's say, much of an expert in HTML. I did learn about it, but I didn't. I didn't really dive deep and. I only know the basics. Anyway, HTML4 equals to likes uh, select, yes. Span uh, what did you like about our product? And then hit type. Oh, right. Uh, Hmm. Wait, let me check my previous words. <laughs> I forgot about the uh, radio buttons and screen. Uh -huh. Man, I could use the constants, but for sake of this video, I'm just, I'm just not going to use that. <laughs> we need to make this as, uh, let's say, simple as possible. Because using the constants will make this a little bit, just a little bit more complex. But it will make the life the life of the developer easier, which is me. But you know, let's do it. So we have a section. Uh, I will not name it. Ah, see what's class name. Class name, section of checkboxes. Which will be... Pretty much just a copy. Yeah, just a copy. So we have a. Alright, since this is just going to be a copy, we can have it. Same thing, so. A label. Alright, we have a span first, so. A span. What did you like about our product? This one should be this like down here, but let's let it be for now. Right. Uh, okay. Yeah. Put this inside the div. So like that. Div. Class name. Uh, section of. Oh. Check boxes. Then put everything in here. Up here. Then just for a that. Nice. Alright. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Yeah, the first check box would be. Cleanliness, cleanliness box. We have an input of type checkbox ID cleanliness box title cleanliness and a span. And I think it should be. There we go, as you can see. Then just repeat the same actions. Oh, what happened? Label HTML4. Thank you. 
span of n y dot Uh, what else do we have? What's the problem here? Ah, right. Oopsies. <laughs> I think we should remove the dislikes. Mm. Yeah, the users can just prove it. Okay, let's remove the dislikes. They can just. put all the things that they didn't like in the feedback so there we go uh, what else do I need to do in here besides that hmm. I think nothing much ok let's continue the label HTML for mm. price checkbox if the customers like our price range of the product like the price range of the of our product ID If it is, uh, yeah, let's say efficient, efficient. Books. We have a title of efficient. Span efficient. Price efficient and I guess customer service will be the last one. We should put the title on the label. Uh, oh well. <laughs> okay, now let's have the text area. Should have the uh, feedback. So the div, no label. Uh, let's get to styling because this looks absolutely horrible okay so we have first the form okay style the form we have a display of flex height all right uh, we can target the root actually so our root root of display grid 
mean height and longitude. Always set your elements to me to mean height if you don't want to have an overflowing bog. <laughs> which I always which always happened to me before. That is of course if you are setting your uh, elements to a to relevant to the viewport height because for example the user goes into landscape and yeah problems start to arise anyway place items there we go then we have the form we have a display of flex align item center by content center oh wait uh, flex call flex direction call it should it be align item center What's the width of the form here? Okay, we should set the width. So we just uh, program eight percent, eighty five percent, and a max of thirty one. Then a mean height of for the beach fifty. Okay, you know what? Let's just have a gap. Set the gap here. Okay. There you go. Then we have a background color of, let's say, blue. I'm not too sure what we can have here. Just a contrast. Maybe end. Alright. Somewhat of an azure. Azure, I don't know how it's pronounced. There we go. Oh, that looks bad. Uh, color of black. Bar. Uh, that looks kind of bad. I wanted to contrast, but. I want to build I know what Okay It's in going on the first here still Yeah Like that one uh, Let's actually set this as a variable Color And a padding, for example. Uh, take us to Remo for a vertical and sideways. Alright, and then we have the labels. Oh, wait, I should remove. I should have this. But there we go. Okay. Then we have in the form we have labels. Label. We just label. We have a display of flex. I can say that the form label span as a display of bullet. There you go. So that the layout shift won't be that uh, big. Uh, we're talking about performance here, but yeah. Uh, uh, as long as you can uh, avoid using display flex or stuff that can impact the cumulative layout shift, as you can see here. There we go. Composite layout and stuff. As you can see, display. Oh, this one also affects it. I think I think you can just use a div tag step of span okay let's let me actually change this all into this <laughs> there we go so now we don't need that anymore. there we go what's my bad <laughs> I 
Okay, anyway. We have a form label of uh, input. With a class name of uh, what's the class name? Form inputs. We have a width of plant. Just say five grand. Sixty percent of the form with a max of fifteen. Why is, why is the number one not really big? Ah, uh, what? Ah, is it because of the length? Okay, it's because of the length of the label. Form label has a width of 100%. So there we go. And that's sh this should be the same for length. For select, form label, select. Okay, you know what? Let's just do it like this. Form, label, where uh, inputs dot form inputs for the select and text. Oh, shit. Oh, okay. I need to blur that out as well. <laughs> what am I doing wrong for the styles? I think we should not have this. Mm, that's weird. So this would work. Like, how does it sense? <laughs> eh, just use the good old good old one that we had. section of checkboxes contained we have a width of 100 plus oh, ok I should just put it over here And then we can have the children of that instead. All the children of this to have a width, uh, to have a display. Uh, in. There we go. And then for the section, we we'll have the data section. Flex align item center flex start justify content center flex direction column and a gun of zero zero point five maybe one and zero point seventy five then we can have this Data section of check boxes. Mm. Ah, okay, oops. 
can say near to half for this to have a margin of one. So, there we go. And section of checkboxes and those children, which would be the label, right? Children of labels will have um, label and div label and input I mean so now label that will display and you know what label and div the margin left of zero then we can actually set the font size for the form to it's too big. No, please. Okay, this is looking better now. There's too much, but you know, we can deal with it. Okay, so good. Okay, for the input as well. Input you can give them. We should give them a pattern. that all the index you should have all buttons inputs and a tag should have a border um, non outline as far and um, what else background Cursor of uh, point. Okay, in inputs cursor text. Okay, there we go. Because we also have an input of type submit. Uh, the select as well. Select. Additionally, oh, there we go. what is that? What's that weird glitch? Oh well. We also can. Now we can have it uh, in here for it to have a border of black uh, in the form. So, form where. Ah, so I got it wrong. Boy. It should be like this, I think, for it. Input, select, uh, text area, button, and a tag would have, <coughs> would have, um, border of 2% solid. Okay, I don't know how to put a border or how to use this where, but we're selected. We're selected. All right, I should have. So it was actually correct. I should have used the important. Anyway, for checkboxes, I think we should add a class name. Because we have a problem, as you can see. Okay. Oh, what? Okay, we have a class. Check box. 
and what game have I should make this 2.25 oh no no not you but the input uh, yeah. so one rim I guess and size 0.5 ok that's so much 0.75 there we go much better I don't know how to edit this, but the main focus anyway is the uh, user reducer, and I've spent a lot of time now just styling this. Oh well, as a, a placeholder as well. And there you are. There you go. I think this is enough styling, really. Uh, Alright, uh, check both input. Chat. I don't what? Checkbox input. Or is there a pointer? There we go. Okay, very nice. Very nice. Um, let me see. Just actually affect it. Mm. Okay, I will study more about this uh, number input, but for now, this is good enough. All right, uh, let's go to the uh, logic. All right, we need to some important oh. <laughs> input type submit. Or you know what? I I think we don't need to have a class name here, so yeah, just additional uh, chunks or data. What we can have is that where uh, input type is equal to text. There we go. So now, we have that and that. Nice one. How can I make that non editable actually? Huh. Maybe we can go to number. Maybe read only. Uh, okay, I will definitely study more about that. Oh well. Why right, for now? Let me edit the submit button first. Actually, input type submit. Adding a pointer. as well which should be oh, or is it border reaches ah here this should be placed inside the sky there we Okay. 
this type. So to do this, we need to so we need to have. Oh wait, let me actually add a on the root a padding so we can see this better. Padding on on the Get rid of the console. So on the root, uh, I mean, what do you call this again? On each input and stuff, we'll add an on change. Um, yeah. The end. On change select. On change. On change is equal to e uh, handle input change, and this will have the value of oh, e. <laughs> and if you're if you're actually mapping through this from the constants technique that I mentioned earlier, then you can just put the id or yeah the id of the the key of id. And that will be passed on to the function because this is actually much difficult. I've experienced it. I had troubles in handling that. Um, what do you call this? In handling. Ah, uh, there. In handling these guys using the e that target that I do. Yeah. Anyway, so if we console the blog, the target that I did, open the console again. Oh, that one. What's this console? Ah, why is this? We try to push. Linux box Professor is very good. Alright. We have a switch thing. Switch. E that target that ID. The case that the ID is name input. We will dispatch. Dispatch and the typo. And one way to also avoid typos is to export all of this. Assign it into a variable. We have const uh, action types. Let's say we can name it. And we have set name is equal to well set. And so on and so forth. Set h equal to set h. So this is to ha to let the editor that you're using uh, tell you that uh, tell you if you made a typo. Of course, this will only work if you're using a um, what do you call this TypeScript. But if you're using plain JavaScript, then the error will occur when you uh, save the code and check it on runtime which is pretty going to be easier to debug but if you didn't like uh, let's say do this then there will be times that the proper state or dispatch will not work and you will have a hard time trying to figure out the bug that happened anyway Set 
set occupation set next set next set feedback would be set feedback there we go amazing let me just export all of them so export so we have const mm. how can we destructure this I look like a noob in using React or import state or modules, but I've been doing this for a few months. Well, I am still new, but yeah. Let's just destructure this. Set name. Set age. Set address. Email. Set phone number. Set occupation. Set lights. Set feedback equal to action types. Excuse me. Let me just export this. There we go. Type of set name and then uh, payload of the payload is equal to either target that value. There we go. And break that. Okay, what is page? Oh, you can also separate this into respective functions for more readability. But in this case, we're just going to have it all in one function, except for the this one right here, of course, because this handles array and checkboxes. So yeah. Dispatch type of set h set h set h okay. payload the either target of value and break that and case of email email input dispatch Set email payload is the target that value. Break that in case of address input type of set set address up oh. address up. Oh. <laughs> set address to payload be the target value. This this is very repetitive, but this is much better than having a ton of use states in, in one component. <coughs> Let's see. Phone number. Am I correct? Phone number. Input. I just import. Okay. In case of that, the dispatch type of set phone number, the payment of the target phone, and the case of <coughs> so if the select, occupation select.
game linux box we will let the function over here const handle checkbox e yes get the idea too do the same for each of these guys what I do we have here environmental render checkbox just copy that under checkbox target ID break this this guy press checkbox copy the ID under checkbox that case of oh a case of this guy efficient checkbox and the checkbox the target ID and break them as well we have the last one for the checkboxes which is the single service case this That part of the ID. <sighs> hmm. Uh -huh. I think. Wait, wait. Let me. Is the idea of the text area? Feedbox text area. Case of. Box text area dispatch. The type is uh, set feedback payload is the target. All oh, right, I should. All right. Oh, never mind. Okay. Uh, okay. Because I'm going to have something. Here. The one thing that I will actually change. there's something that I should actually change and that is the uh, likes since the likes is actually set by the developer or the organization then I think we can just have an object of likes so interface likes this will have the clean Cleanliness. Uh, okay. Clean. Cleanliness. For boolean. boolean. Environmental friendly. Boolean. Uh, you, so you can take this one step further. Since what I'm going to do is just have another switch statement and check for the ID and then just apply a key like cleanliness and environmental friendly and the key should actually match the name of well this each name should match the key that you want to get because they are the keys <laughs> so if you want to take this one step further you can assign let's say a an attribute to the input or to the checkbox and then it should match the key of each one which I think I should actually do <laughs> okay uh, let's actually do that we'll have right we have a data value I guess you can say data key, data key equals to Let's have the in this one. Let's do it. And this one will be efficient. Efficient. This one will be nice. And by mental friendly. And this one is cleanliness. Okay. 
then we will pass on the I uh, will pass on the key should be a string and change all of this into the e the target dot data set dot key. there we go and pretty much just uh, have it in what else what else uh price boolean efficient boolean boolean is pretty much true or false so service then replace this with um what you call this like and also this with that so const likes equals and this is what I like to do is to initialize variables that we can then just put it there. So const likes equals to this guy. And everything will be set to false at first. Then just toggle between them on and off. So false. Uh what problem do we have here uh -huh. right. there, we go. there we go amazing and then now we can have this and this much type of uh, uh, set legs to so the current state I mean, likes we will, mm, we will okay so we will take so the payload will have the current state dot likes would that work I, I think it's I think it works yeah okay the current state that likes which is pretty much all of the objects and then have the state that likes with a key okay again so it const key value state that likes key okay. and the key value two equal to the action that they <laughs> no to the e that target to the value i should actually also place the value here which is a string and have it inside of here e that target that there we go so now if we actually console log the state and check in here if we try to change professor we'll have professor if we change to check this we'll have uh, uh what <laughs> um okay wait Ah, the value, right. Ah, okay, okay. <coughs> I haven't dealt with... Ah, oh. okay. Okay, I should remove this. I forgot, I forgot. <coughs> Key value will be opposite. Key value. Wait, how do you get the value? You know what? Wait. <laughs> actually, console the log. Console. Key value first and see what it gives us. This should give us the key, but for now. 
match it. Undefined. Oh. If I console the log key. Customer friendly fishing. If we go here. Ah. Should be customer service, my friend. So this one is undefined key value. If I console the log states that uh, states that likes ah, okay, that's why <laughs> that is why. Okay. There we go. Now if we say that const key value is equal to state that likes key, it should be should work. <coughs> but let's see what it gives us back. False. Okay. This console logs that value. So if we say that we want to dispatch type of set lights into payload the current state. So we const lights equals to state and key value is equal to this there we go ah okay this is the correct way to do it we want to get the likes from the state and we're going to get the value of that of the like from which key then I say 10 minutes and then we have different likes That key will have the opposite of key value. Oh. Since this key is equal to each of these, either of these guys. Let's say efficient, that's also a key. So in here we will pass it on. So now let's try if this works or not. True, customer service is true, and price should be true here. There we go. And if we toggle that again, it should be false. Yes, it worked. Okay. And now if we change this, there we go. So you can see feedback. No, for the final part, uh, let's remove the console and see if this fully works. We can have a submit handler and that's why I said to use techniques and stuff because just look at how long this is it's yes it's readable but separating this into uh, well separate parts will make this much more uh, easier to handle in the future because right now it's really unmotivating to maintain this doesn't it look like that <laughs> but this one is I like this one. Okay. So now we can just say to handle submit and console.log. I'm just going to console log to see. So on submit, uh, I'm going to console.log. So we have an object here actually, const a table, const. 
console that table actually should do it console that table what wait that's a console that table wait object object data is equal to name state that name H state that H um I pretty much just copy everything here. But I will do something different. So okay. Email address state that address. So likes will have an array of likes and then we can say that so in here actually we, have, we set we can set a value of the likes so say const likes of users equals to uh, object that keys so the keys of the state that likes that map the filter rather filter uh, key return key if it's return key if it's true else no we have likes of users And then feedback. feedback. You can say that here is data user. We can also make this dynamic. Here is your survey data. Uh, okay, I should actually remove the console log as well. Where is that? Oh, no, never mind. <laughs> so the name, age 18, address, hometown, enter phone number, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, student, there we go. Submit. There we go. Here's your survey data. Server data. Phone number. The address is hometown. Age. Email. Feedback. Nothing. And the likes. Okay. That's a problem. Ah, occupation as well. So I think the value for that should be students. Default value, initial value rather than student. Because <laughs> we didn't really move it. <coughs> anyway. Ah wait, I think we can just leave this leave this empty. Then we can just say in the input uh, where's that? This can have this can be selected. Selected. There we go. So now this can this should be changed. And uh, require no. <laughs> uh, 
okay well this can definitely be edited to be better but the main point of this is to use reducer which should have which could have been discussed in 10 minutes oh well the default value or value prop and select use the default value is weird value is hmm. I don't know what this warning is but okay I mean I just let's just finish this works uh, it's not working hmm hmm key string oh why is it in here we get the body but in here we get the key itself huh huh <laughs> huh oh wait wait state that There we go. Okay, this should work now. Okay. Again. I think there are definitely some bugs here, but it can be fixed with further optimizations. But the main point is to use reducer, which is working fabulously. As you can see here. There we go. <laughs> now it's working. Right. <laughs> and yeah. And we can actually make this into a alert instead. So alert. Here's your survey data. Huh. What got to? What do you mean to? Ah. There we go. <laughs> this looks ugly, but okay. It's working. There we go. Okay. <laughs> there we go. That's how you can make use of use reducer to handle different states, but all of those states leads down to one uh, to one purpose, which is to fill out a let's say a survey data. And this is the survey data. What did they like? And end of this. There we go. Just environmental friendly. And we can actually make this all cups. Uh, turn key to uppercase or lowercase if you want. 
for more uh, readability in the oh wait wait a second for never mind I think it doesn't work huh it's just a string right so it should be to uppercase oh let me try to do this again. Professor, let's say. Oh, it doesn't work, huh? Uh, never mind that then. <laughs> I guess we can just do it in here manually, make this uppercase, but yeah, you get the gist. This is how user register works, and I recommend using this if you like have a survey form or let's say music player or a video player that goes that handles what video or media let's say plays next and and the one to keep track of the current or the previous media and if the user wants to go back then we will go back stuff like that which is pretty much what the act redox does and actually make it so that it is accessible to let's say every component in your Entire in the entirety of your app, which is very good and at the same time uh, Too much if you're just handling a simple one like a survey form Anyway, that is all I hope This definitely this definitely bored you, but I hope you learned Something that you can use to make your life easier This is definitely much more difficult and time-consuming, but the techniques I've said will definitely lessen your development time. But for now, this is it, and I will share this. I will share this repository in my GitHub, which is what I'm going to do now. I'll stage all the commits and share the link. Thank you for watching, and have a good day.